Hello, Matt here from RetroOnly.com. Today we'll be talking about how much an Atari console is worth. Before we get to that, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Do you own an Atari and have considered selling it if the price was right? Maybe you were at a thrift store and you see one and you were looking to possibly buy it to resell. Well, if either of those are true, then this video is for you. So, how much is an Atari console worth? Because every different Atari console has a different value, each one is obviously worth a different amount. Here are the top models and what they are worth. The Atari 2600 sells for around $50 to $60. The Atari 5200 sells for between $80 and $150. The Atari 7800 sells for between $100 and $150. The Atari XEGS sells for between $300 and $500. And the Atari Jaguar sells for between $250 and $500. One important thing that you do have to watch out for is Atari has made many classic consoles that come preloaded with games. Although it seems that those would be worth more, they are actually not. So if you were looking at Atari Flashback, the remakes, those are typically only worth $10 to $30 in used condition. The worth of an Atari will normally vary from model to model and also vary by the condition. In this video, we'll try to shed some more light on the worth of each of one of these models. So if you want to know more about all the Atari models and what exactly they're worth, then you'll want to keep watching. Atari 2600 this is a home video game console that was introduced and released on September 11th, 1977 by Atari. This Atari has about 470 unique games that could be purchased for it. However, the value of this model depends on the Atari 2600 model that you have, and more importantly, what games are actually with it. From its release in 1977 to its discontinuation in 1992, the Atari 2600 came in several different models. The original 6-switch wood grain Atari 2600 generally fetches higher prices than the Atari 2600 Junior model, which is in a smaller, all-plastic form. There are a handful of other models that carry the 2600 signature, including the 4-switch wood veneer version, the all-black Darth Vader version, and a myriad of licensed clones from third-party manufacturers. If you have a 4-switch wood grain console, an Atari 2600 Jr., or a Darth Vader, they're worth approximately $30 to $50. A heavy Sixer is probably worth upwards of $60, whereas a light Sixer will be about $40 to $50. Regardless of the version you have, the worth is usually higher if the box is still in mint condition or if you have some incredibly rare games with it. The Atari 5200 this is a home video game console which was introduced in 1982, succeeding the 2600 Atari version. This Atari was initially created to compete with the Intellivision, but ended up instead competing with the ColecoVision. The Atari 5200 was originally called the Atari Video System X Advanced Video Computer System in its prototype stage and was codenamed PAM after a female employee at Atari. It is also rumored that PAM actually stood for Personal Arcade Machine, as the majority of the games for this system ended up being arcade conversions. It had several differences which made it distinctive from the other Atari. These differences included a lack of a computer keyboard, the Atari's computer 10 kilobyte operating system was replaced with a simpler 2 kilobyte monitor program. A number of important registers, such as those of the GTIA and Pokey chips, appear at different memory locations. The purpose of some registers changed slightly on the 5200 as well. The 5200's analog joysticks appear as a pair of paddles to the hardware, which required different input handling to the tr traditional digital joystick input on the normal Atari computers. On May 21st in 1984, it was announced in a press conference to accompany executives that the Atari 5200 would be discontinued upon the release of the Atari 7800. The Atari 5200 cost about $269 in 1984. 
and Atari sold over 1 million consoles before the 5200 was eventually discontinued. The value of the Atari 5200 varies depending on the condition and if you have any games for it. The console by itself will typically sell for between $80 and $150, with many consoles that are working, but with nothing besides the console, they're currently selling for around $100. The Atari 7800 This Atari is a home video game console, which was introduced by Atari in 1986. It was the first console to have backwards compatibility without using any additional modules. The Atari 7800 Pro system was actually the first console from Atari that was designed by an outside company, General Computer Corporation. The project was originally called the Atari 3600, but later changed to the 7800 before its release. The Atari 7800's introductory price was $140, which is equivalent to $327 today. The Atari 7800 has a memory of 4 kilobytes of RAM, 4 kilobytes of BIOS ROM, 48 kilobyte cartridge ROM space, and a display of 160 by 240, 320 by 240, and 160 by 288, 320 by 288 if PAL. 25 on-screen colors out of a possible 256. The graphics is a Maria custom chip at 7.16 megahertz. And even though it uses the same audio chips as the Atari 2600, it had significant improved graphics over it. The Atari 7800 also had a different model of joystick from the 2600, and the media was stored in a ROM cartridge. The 1986 launch is sometimes referred to as a relaunch, because the Atari 7800 was originally announced on May 21st, 1984, to replace Atari's Atari 5200. Sadly, due to low sales, the general release was stopped. The Atari 7800 was discontinued in January of 1992, and succeeded by the Atari XEGS. The value of the Atari 7800 varies based on condition and the games included, just like any other Atari console will. The value of this console is typically $100 to $150 for the console by itself in normal condition. And even non-working models will still typically sell for $30 to $50. The Atari XEGS This is a home video game console that succeeded the Atari 7800. It was released in late 1987 by the Atari Corporation. The introductory price was $159, which is $357 in today's money. The media was also stored in a ROM cartridge and had a memory of 64 kilobytes of RAM with a display of 384 by 240 overscan, 256 color palette. The XEGS release was backed by new games, including Barnyard Blaster and Bug Hunt, plus cartridge ports of older games such as Fight Night, Accolade 1985, Load Runner, Broderbund 1983, Necromancer, Synapsis Software 1982, and Ballblazer, Lucasfilm Games 1985. This version was discontinued in 1992, along with the rest of Atari's 8-bit computers as well as the Atari 2600 and Atari 7800. This console is much more rare to find in used condition, so the prices for it are higher as well. Typically, you could expect to pay between $300 and $500 for a used console with a few games, but finding any of these consoles is rare, which means that the value can fluctuate a lot. Atari Jaguar this is the final home video game that was released by the Atari company in November 1993. At its introduction, the Atari Jaguar cost $249.99 and about 250,000 units were sold before it was discontinued in 1996. The Atari Jaguar also had a ROM cartridge to store media with a memory of 2 megabytes of RAM. It also had an internal RAM cartridge storage. Atari advertised the Jaguar as the first 64-bit video game console, while competing with the existing 16-bit consoles, Sega Genesis and the Super NES. The Atari Jaguar's best-selling game was Alien vs. Predator, which had about 85,000 unit sales. Atari attempted to expand the lifespan of the system with the Atari Jaguar CD add-on, 
and marketing the Jaguar as a low-cost next-generation console with a price which was $100 less than any of its competitors. However, when the Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation were released in 1995, the sales of the Jaguar took a great hit and continued to drop. Ultimately, it sold no more than 250,000 units before it was discontinued in 1996. On top of the financial crisis, the Jaguar also had some technical difficulties as well. The Jaguar's underlying hardware was crippled by a flaw in the CPU's memory controller, and this prevented code execution out of the RAM. Other defects that were not really as severe included a buggy UART. The memory controller flaw, which could have been mitigated by a mature code development environment, to unburden the programmer from having to micromanage small chunks of code. These commercial and technical breakdowns affected Atari in such a tremendous manner, it pushed Atari to leave the video game console market altogether, so they haven't created a new console since this one, besides the flashback models with preloaded games that they've made in recent years. This console is typically worth $250 to $500, but again, it is far more rare than the older consoles, so the value can change quickly and quite drastically depending on the condition as well as the games and accessories that are included. Now that you know the value of the different Atari models, you can make an informed decision on if you should get one to sell or if you should sell the one that you've been holding on to. Ultimately, they aren't making any more of these classic consoles, so it's possible that the value of the more rare models will continue to go up. However, the Atari flashbacks have taken a good amount of the market since they are quite cheap, so if Atari releases a flashback for the more rare consoles, it will likely actually hurt the value of those consoles as well. Obviously no one knows the future, but if you have a rare console and don't ever play it anymore, it might be worthwhile to sell it and to get the cash. This has been Matt from RetroOnly.com. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel as well as check out our website, RetroOnly.com.